In this discussion video, we'll do some practice problems involving integral properties. So the first example I want to look at says, suppose f is an odd function with the integral from negative 4 to 0. Uh, this should have a dx. So dx equals 7. The integral from 4 to 6 of f of x dx equals 3. And the integral from negative 4 to 10 of our function equals 20. We want to evaluate the integral from 6 to 10. Okay, so I first want to recall, what, what does it mean for f to be an odd function? So f is an odd function. Remember, the definition of that was f of negative x equals negative f of x. So this is true for all values of x that are in the domain. And graphically, that means that our graph is going to be symmetric about about the origin so about the origin so let me draw a sample picture okay but we had seen this before in a previous lecture um, so whatever our graph looks like on one side of the origin so maybe it looks something like this all of these points will now be reflected across the origin so when that happens we end up with a graph like like this so, for example, like this point over here got reflected across the origin, and here's its mirror image, and maybe a point like this got reflected across the origin, and here's its mirror image. Let's do one more, a point like this. When it gets reflected, that ends up over here. Okay, so this is an example of what an odd functions graph looks like. Alrighty, so from here, I want to give you five minutes to try this. So pause the video in four, three, two, one, pause it and try it for five minutes. Alrighty, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it and tried it for about five minutes. Let's talk about it together now. So what I want to do next is I'm going to make an axis. So this is going to be my x-axis and I'm going to put a tick mark. Let me also make a little y-axis here. Um, eventually I'll move this and draw it a little bit bigger. But I, I want to put a tick mark at any of these limits of integration that I see. These numbers written at the bottom and the top of these integrals that represent my intervals. So numbers like negative 4, 0, 4, 6, and 10. So I'll put a tick mark at negative 4. Here's 0, 1 at positive 4, 1 at 6, and then 1 at 10. Alrighty, so I'm just shifting this over to the top of the page so I have some more room. So now at each of these, I'm going to draw a vertical line. So at 0, that's already there at the y-axis. At 4, I'll draw a vertical line. At 6, I'll draw a vertical line. At 10, I'll draw a vertical line. And that's just to separate out each of these intervals. So I don't know what the graph of my function looks like. It might look something like this. It might look something like this. Well, actually, I know it doesn't look like either of those because it's supposed to be an odd function. So it's supposed to be symmetric about the origin. So it'll look more like that very first graph that I had drawn, maybe something like this. But I don't know exactly what it looks like. So I'm not going to try to draw a graph. Instead, I'm just going to use the information that's given in the integrals. So we know, for example, that the integral from negative 4 to 0 is supposed to be 7. So if I label that in the picture, from negative 4 to 0, this area should be 7. The integral from 0 to 4 wasn't given to us, but I can figure it out. So the integral from negative 4 to 0, we know. And if I compare that, oops, let's put a dx, can't forget that dx. If I compare that to the integral from 0 to 4 of f of x dx, because f is an odd function, our graph is symmetric about the origin. So these two areas are going to be exactly opposite. So this will be equal to the negative of this other area. So that means the area from 0 to 4 is going to be negative 7. OK, so then the integral from 4 to 6, I believe, was given to us. That was given to us to be 3. So let's label that. So that is going to be 3. Oops. That's going to be 3. And then the whole integral from negative 4 to 10 was given to us. That was given to be 20. All right, so now I'm going to use one of my integral properties. So if I add the integral from negative 4 to 0 of my function, and then plus the integral from 0 to 4 of my function, plus the integral from 4 to 6 of my function, plus, let's write that plus sign better, plus 
and then plus the integral from 6 to 10 of our function. And that's going to equal one integral that goes from negative 4 all the way to 10 of our function. All right, and now let's plug in the values we know. So the first integral is 7. The second one, we got its value is negative 7. The third one, we know the value is 3. Okay, this fourth integral, that, that's what I'm after. It's from 6 to 10, f of x dx. And this last one, well, that was the whole thing. That was given to be 20. That was given to be 20. Okay, so simplifying this, the 7's cancel. And if I subtract 3, we get, this implies, our integral from 6 to 10, 6 to 10 of our function, will be equal to 17. And, and that is our answer. Alrighty, let's do another practice problem. Okay, so this is going to involve a different integral property. Okay, so the question is problem number 11 from worksheet 13. Part A asks us to prove that the integral from 0 to 2 of 2 to the x sine x power dx is less than or equal to 8 and it's greater than or equal to 0 0.5. Okay, and then B is similar. It's just going to ask us to improve this this lower bound, and the lower bound is the number that um, is always lower than the value of this integral. Okay, well, it'll ask us to improve it and say that, say that we can actually show that the integral is always going to be greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so I want to begin by recalling the key integral property that will help us here. So recall if f of x is less than or equal to g of x for all values of x in the closed interval from a to b, then when you take the integral from a to b of f of x, and you compare that to the integral from a to b of g of x, so since f of x is less than or equal to g of x, that means the f of x function is lower than the g of x function, or, or maybe equal to. But that'll mean that the area under the f of x function is less than or equal to the area under the g of x function. So we have that same inequality even with the integrals. Okay, so with that said, I first want to give you five minutes to try this problem. So pause the video in four, three, two, one, pause it and try it for five minutes on your own first. All right, so hopefully you did that. Let's talk about it together now. So for part A, the interval we're looking at has x in between 0 and 2. And if I look at, so eventually what I want to do is I want to build a chain of inequalities that involves the function that I'm integrating, this 2 to the x sine x power. So I want to be able to say, well, what is x times sine x always in between first? So what we know, we also know that sine x is always going to be in between negative 1 and positive 1 in general. So then, if we think about x times sine x, just logically, well, what, is, what sort of the biggest this could possibly be? The biggest it could be is if the x was somehow, you know, the biggest x could be is 2, and the biggest that sine could be is 1. So the biggest x times sine x could possibly be, maybe, is 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay. So it definitely might happen that, you know, maybe, uh, maybe x times sine x never actually equals 2, but this is the biggest it could even has a chance of being. The biggest it even has a chance of being is 2. On the flip side, what's like the smallest it even has a chance of being? Well, if I think about the fact that I'm multiplying two things, x times sine x, to make that be as small as you know, possible, I want to make the sine be negative. So the sine value would be negative 1. And then if the sine value is like as sort of as negative as it could be, negative 1, I want to now make the x be as big as it can be, which is 2. And 2 times negative 1 is going to be negative 2. Okay, so that was a little bit confusing. I would definitely pause the video, rewind, and go through that at your own pace. Because that's important. It takes a little bit of thought to wrap our heads around what we just did there. Okay, so now that we have this chain of inequalities, 
I'm gonna rate, I'm gonna do sort of do two to everything. So I'll do two to the, two to the, two to the everywhere. So two to the negative two is less than or equal to two to the x sine x is less than or equal to this two to squared. Okay, so that, that is something I'm allowed to do and it preserves inequalities. So if we simplify, so there's kind of two things that I wanna do now actually. Because I have the function in the middle that I want, I'm gonna put an integral sign on everything. And this integral property here says that when we do that, it'll preserve my inequality. So I'm gonna integral here, one here, one here. My integral is from zero to two. Zero to two, zero to two. And then two to the negative two is one fourth. So I'm doing the integral of one fourth dx, less than or equal to, because it preserves the inequality. Then this is two to the x sine x dx is less than or equal to two squared is four, 40 x. Okay, so I just gotta find the integrals of these outside pieces, and I'm hoping that those will be the 0 0.5 and that eight. Okay, and it turns out they will be, we just gotta show it. But I notice with the one fourth and the four that those are both constants. Okay, that's super nice. And we saw how to do a inter definite integral of a constant, let's just review it. We saw that in lecture. So if I have the integral from zero to two, and I look at the function y equals four, for example, it's a horizontal line. So we'd be finding the area underneath this graph over the interval from zero to two. And if I shade that in, that shape is just a rectangle. Okay, so the, the integral on the right is gonna be the area of this rectangle. So the height is four, and the base is from zero to two, that's just two units long. So in the same way, this integral on the left is gonna be that constant, that one fourth, times the length of the interval, which is two. Okay, and then less than or equal to, less than or equal to, zero to two, two to the x sine x dx, and then we could simplify this. One fourth times two is one half, or that's 0 0.5, and then four times two is eight, and that is precisely what we wanted to show. Okay, so now let's look at B. And B says, improve the lower bound in A by showing that this whole integral, we could actually show that it's greater than or equal to two instead of just a half like we got. Well, that means when we do this inequality work here, we need to be able to find a higher lower bound for x times sine x than getting negative two. So I'm gonna give a hint for that and ultimately I wanna leave that as an exercise for you to think about. But my hint, is that we wanna find a better lower bound for sine of x using the fact that we know x is in the interval from zero to two. So we have a very specific interval for what you know, x is in between. So using that, can I find a better lower bound for sine x? So sine x is always gonna be greater than or equal to something is there something better I can write than simply just negative one here? And that's what I wanna leave for you to think about.